Yo, yo, quick video about uh, semen retention, about celibacy, and about the mind. This one, uh, the topic here is going to be about how the enemy is behind or between your ears, let's say, between your ears, behind your eyes, somewhere in this region right here. So other people also have this region right here. We all have a brain, and uh, not everybody's brains are functioning uh, the way that they really should be. Uh, a lot of people have damaged brains, uh, most of us really. And uh, I can't say that I'm exempt from that because I've done a lot of things in my life that have not been healthy for my brain. That includes uh, substances I've taken, that includes relationships I've engaged in, that includes uh, behaviors, that includes habits, that includes thoughts even, uh, belief systems that are not good for the overall health of this uh, organism here. So the thoughts that you have, the message here that I wanna share with you guys is that you as an individual, you as a soul, you as a child of God, as a, as a conscious uh, entity in the world, you have the power uh, to exert authority over your mind. So the mind has, a, has sort of a life of its own. It gets into these uh, kind of habits. And you could think of this kind of like, if I roll a ball down a hill, it's gonna keep moving on its own. You know, I'm the one that set that thing in motion, but you know, there's this, these physical laws that keep the thing in motion. Uh, similarly in our brain, when we're engaged in certain sort of beliefs and, and thought patterns, uh, and then those translate into activities and habits in our lives, and the more we engage in those, we start to ingrain them, and then our brain starts to develop a, a sense, a sort of momentum towards those things, towards those thoughts, whether we are consciously choosing to have those thoughts or not, we're going to still experience them. Um, and so what we can do, what, what we all have the power to do, this is something that I've discovered uh, for myself firsthand, and something that uh, I, you could have maybe told me before I discovered for myself that I have this ability, you may have uh, told me such a thing and I might not believe you. And the reason I might not believe you is because I wouldn't feel like I was worthy. Uh, on some level, I, I had such low self-esteem that I thought I deserved to be uh, suffering on some level. I deserve these, these negative thoughts, this negative self-talk. Um, I believed it. I believed it was true. It's not I didn't view it as a as a problem I'm having. I viewed it as uh, me just, you know, uh, telling myself the truth about what a piece of crap I am. So ultimately what we have to realize is that those are simply thoughts and thoughts really are just electric signals firing in your brain. And they don't necessarily mean anything. They don't actually correlate with anything real in the real world. And they don't necessarily reflect anything accurate about you yourself. Because truly, your true nature is beyond all of these thoughts. Truly, you know, and this is sort of kind of spiritual uh, kindergarten stuff. I think most of you already know this. But, but really, you are not the thoughts, nor are you the body. You are that conscious awareness that all of those things are happening uh, within. There's like a conscious space that all of these things exist in. And that space is more uh, an accurate description of, of who and what you really are than the things in the consciousness. The contents of the consciousness don't define you. It's the consciousness itself, right? And that consciousness itself can exert authority over the contents of the consciousness uh, insofar as it is within your bioenergetic field, right? So I can't necessarily uh, change the contents of somebody else's consciousness, uh, but I can absolutely do that uh, with my own consciousness. And sometimes what it takes is, is a sense of uh, very kind of firm, uh, a, a very firm authoritative stance that your soul takes. So I had this experience numerous times in my life and then I've kind of regressed and had to come back to this um, over and over. But I realized that if I'm, if I'm very serious and I notice that these, these thoughts are sort of running and they're, they're pulling me down, they're, low, they're making me depressed, they're making me anxious, they're lowering my vibration, then, then I have to notice it's happening 
and really I kind of put my foot down uh, energetically, you know, spiritually speaking, in the core of my being, I say no, absolutely not. And I reject the thoughts. It's like having an invader in your house and you very firmly say, get the F out of here. Get out of my house. You are not welcome here. And when you start to practice this, you realize that you do have this, this real uh, authority, actually. But you have to believe in it. You have to believe that you're worthy of having a better experience. You have to stop believing the, the negative self-talk. You have to realize that it's just that. It's just talk. It's just narratives. It's nonsense. But if you were to believe it enough for long enough, you are going to start to manifest those things. You know, that you, your head says you suck. You're not good enough, blah, blah, blah. If you invest enough energy into that, um, it's going to start to become true. And then it's going to get even harder to eliminate those thoughts because they seem to be reflecting reality. See what I'm saying? So a lot of times it also has to do with us acting better than we feel. So we have to, you know, if, if the, the thoughts are, you know, don't clean your room, do it later, don't make your bed, you know, do it, whatever, um, do it, do it, do exactly what your head says not to do. Uh, this is part of why fasting, uh, semen retention, uh, cold plunges, you know, hard workouts, things like this is why they're so incredibly good for not just our bodies and our minds, but our spirits. Because we are, we are uh, making an intentional, conscious choice to do something that's going to be uncomfortable for a little while, knowing that we have the authority uh, within ourselves to remain in a state of, of comfort, of some sort of peace, uh, because we understand that we are not the sensation, but we are the witness of the sensation. So this is a practice, you know, every day. We have to practice this and it gets uh, like anything you practice, the more you do it, the easier it gets. So, uh, all right, that's enough out of me for this video. Peace.